Welcome to the Crucial Classics Bring Your Own Copy series, where what we do is watch movies together. We are going to watch all of the biggest titles from that golden age of Hollywood. So join me as we will sync up, press play at the same time, and let's just enjoy the magic from this golden age of Hollywood. Back to Crucial Classics. If this is your first time here, welcome and take a look around at our channel. Plenty of content for you to binge if you love old movies. What we do on this channel is watch them together from start to finish. Let's start looking at the wall in my living room. It's decorated like that because old movies are important for the past 32 years. So today's title, I'm so excited. Um, Bullet, you know, I just am ready to watch the chase scene. Um, I've seen this movie from start to finish one time here in this house it was the first time ever that I saw it guys So that's like 30 mm, Well, no, I've been here for a little while, but um Close to 30 years that I've been watching films um, Before I sat and watched it all the way through one time before that I had seen it at the airplane scene So I had totally missed the Mustang scene my history with Mustangs my grandpa was a mechanic um, huge big time big deal mechanic uh, worked for a big construction company so he was in charge of all of their heavy he was the head mechanic in charge of all of that heavy equipment building homes building towns and stuff so he was just a major car guy right and I've told you guys off and on just in the different watch alongs you always hear me talking about my grandpa but he was the coolest man ever um, and so like he would just always, hearing him and my grandma, he would always buy a new car every year. But when you think about it, back in those days, cars are like 3,500 bucks, right? And so, you know, you're just trading in. He was just always like getting the next fresh off of the line. So I just did the math. My auntie was 16 and that's how old, it, I don't think it's still that age uh, to get your driver's license, but back in the day, she was 16 in 69. This movie comes out in 68. I've heard my dad talking about this legendary, I felt like he said it was green, it might have been red, but it was that fastback Mustang. My papa got them because uh, he, my dad got to drive in it. My auntie was older than my dad, um, but she got a Mustang for her 16th birthday and when I turned 16 he wanted to get me a Mustang he was just too cool my grandpa was too cool for me and so he had done his little research bless his heart my grandpa was just, he spoiled me to death um, this was back before the internet so he was going through the paper he had found we went drove out it was kind of across town still in town but far from where we lived and it was a white, it was not a, as classic as this. It was one of those 80s bodied Mustangs and I didn't like it. I didn't think it was cute. It wasn't pretty, the 80s Mustangs kind of from the 60s. And it's not like I was this little bitch that only wanted a 1960s. I didn't know about the 1960s classic Mustangs. I didn't really know about Mustangs because like when I could have become aware of them was the 80s, okay? I'm a child of the 80s and they were hideous in that time. So I, you know, to see that it's like, no, thank you. I didn't understand the muscle and the power and like the coolness. I ended up getting a car. I got a Ford, um, Escort. They don't even make those anymore, but a little four door, little teeny tiny, just a little <laughs> sedan. <laughs> um, and when I got to school, and you know, people were, you know, getting a car when you're in high school is a privilege. I, I definitely understood that. But people, so they were like, had a car, but then, oh, you know, my grandpa was trying to get me a mud. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, like, why didn't you, like, everybody would have thought I was so cool, not that I really gave enough about that, but anyway, so, it kind of turned on the light bulb for me, though, about, like, Mustangs are pretty fucking cool, okay, so, also, this is my first, like, huge crush in high school, this dude, he was working at my first job, I've told you guys, my first job was in high school, I worked at Blockbuster Video, and he was rolling into there, uh, driving this, V8, the GT Mustang. I 
can't remember if it was a convertible. I remember it was dark green and just looking at that thing, oh. That car, I mean, he was pretty hot too, but his car, <laughs> so that. Now, let me think too, this would have been in about 96, it was probably, yeah. So that body was looking a lot different than the 80s stuff. And from that point forward, that dude's green, when he would turn that thing on, that noise, I was a senior in high school. I was gonna get me a Mustang before I die. And it pretty much was my mission for like the next 20 years. It took me 20 years. Um, I finally, gosh, was I, I'm trying to, think. no, I wasn't 40. I wasn't 40, I was, was I 40? Like right before I turned 40. It wasn't a midlife crisis, people. It was a lifelong dream goal. I finally was at this place where it was just like pay off. I, I had like a really low monthly uh, bill on a car that I had just been proud of myself to be able to get for myself. It was a responsible car. It's a little SUV, four wheel drive, gets me around safely where the way I need to through weather and everything. And I had a real nice low monthly payment on it, but it was like stretched out, you know? And so I was just real comfortable just writing this small check. And then finally it was just like, you know, would you just like pay this effing thing off? I mean, it was no problem to pay it off either though too. So I finally paid it off because for some reason there was just, see people live life, live life for moments, make memories. And don't keep around, look, let me just put it like this, um, there were quite a few people that didn't get a ride in my Mustang because you're going to be talking shit about, it's frivolous, it's too much, oh, don't get the V8 because of the cost of the gas and the maintenance on it, it's like, okay, that's alright, you don't, that's fine, you know, that, those are your worries, you don't have to ride in this Mustang with me. Don't have the naysayers and the those type of vibration people experiencing that magical memory making machine with you. So I just, it's like get rid of even the small car payment. Now I own my SUV and I'm never going to get rid of that thing. I have that thing till this day. I've had my, I was just, I went and car washed my little SUV the other day. I bought my baby brand new. My baby had four miles on it when I bought it also a Ford, I have a Ford Escape, four miles on it, I bought it brand new, that's another, don't buy a brand new car, you know, it depreciates in value, it's like, I bought that car, brand new like that, because I wanted it to have those four miles on it that it had, because I knew that I will drive that car until I put 500,000 miles on it, I don't, over all of these years, to be, I bought it in two, 2008 brand new four miles on it I still have that car to this day I was washing it the other day and I was just having to sit there I was like how old is my baby it's my baby because it's left me walking only one time that's because I messed it up in like a hundred degree heat in the summertime it just tips people I had my phone in my car charging on the little you know plugs into the cigarette lighter it was over 100 degrees that day. I left it all day while I went into work, forgot about it, and, and honestly didn't know that that was wrong to do either. But it had drained my battery all day long in the too hot heat. When I came out at the end of the day to turn it on, it wouldn't start. I had killed my battery, but I did that. That's the one and only time in all of these years my car has left me walking. It's a perfect little angel. I've had it since 2018. Is that 15 years? I've had, it, it looks brand new. I don't even have 100,000 miles on my car. <laughs> And I have driven the hell out of that thing too, but um, it's sitting at like 80,000 miles. Anyway, I finally paid that off. She's my baby. I bought her with four miles on her. I still have her to this day. It was a perfect purchase. You people, you don't let people throw all of their values onto you, right? So once I paid off my SUV, it was like there is absolutely no reason to 
do this find this mustang i became on a mission across the united states of america to find my mustang i had been on the search for it for 20 years i already knew i already had so many of the stats i had not seen bullet yet um i had my mustang by the first time that i saw bullet from start to finish here in this house when that scene came on <gasps> because i knew and Ugh. Okay, people, and I've told you, it's heartbreaking. The place that I first told you guys anything about my Mustang is in the watch along for HUD. Because he's flying along in his convertible. Mine was a convertible. Um, and I say that when he's just, it's, the boy says, you sure do drive this thing. And he's just flying along in it. And I was like, I had a convertible. It's still kind of painful but it was just a perfect storm type of a thing you guys have heard in some of the videos I'm not gonna get into all of it but it was during this time on the planet where literally I was able to sell my Mustang and I made money on it it again you know don't let people don't buy that it's frivolous it's it's gonna lose money no I made money on my Mustang okay paid it all the way off and got a check so yeah uh it just worked out it was timing to do that but every single time that i turned that thing on and i was able to get into it i was so aware of the blessing of it it was a moment it was a memory i remember every single time i remember the feel of that leather steering wheel i remember it was just it's that bucket seat it was so low it was so comfortable that thing is the most comfortable thing to just go road tripping in all day um but i was on a search across the country i didn't give a fuck where i would have found just the perfect specs if i would have found my perfect mustang i would have flown anywhere to go get it and just drive it home right and so I'm looking across the country for months. I didn't particularly care about the color of it, um, but I wasn't settling for less than a V8. I was getting a GT, fuck it, okay? It was gonna be a convertible and it was gonna be a GT, fuck it, okay? So I'm looking across the country. I had a cap price because I was keeping it very reasonable too. It wasn't gonna be brand new. I didn't want a brand new one. I also was very honed in on the body um, style look from like a two-year range I was only honed in on a 2013 to 2014 that was all I was interested in in all of these years since my man back in high school the only thing that had caught my eye where every single angle of that bitch was everything so I was looking for a 2013 or 14 across this country had a price cap was never finding anything that was floating my boat, finding my lost remote. Finally, I just said, you know what? Let me up this price range by $1,000 and see what, ha what that does. Don't you know, as soon as I did that, here, not across the country, where I live and up the street at a dealership, they had pictures of every single speck of this Mustang, except they had taken pictures of it and it looked kind of purple. And I was, it's, we're not thirsty though, okay? The, the way that I said that, back in the day, Cribs, do you guys, MTV, when the stars would show you their house, Rod Stewart's daughter was doing that at her dad's house, and he had like a yellow Lamborghini or whatever, and she just said that because his car was yellow, he, it was thirsty. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, yes. It's like, we, I wasn't thirsty for this Mustang though. Everything about it was going to be perfect. So I was looking at the pictures of this car up the street for me by $1,000 more from what I had thought was my arbitrary cap. And every spec except for the color. And I was like, okay, all I can do is go take a look at it. I'll schedule an appointment to go take a look at it, but I'm not that thirsty. It, that color, if it's kind of purplish, it's not gonna work. So, um, then I was real scared. Then I was being that, oh, I shouldn't do it. I don't need it. I should eat it. And then it was like, just go. I was talking to the car dealership man. He was too nonchalant. He was a brother. He was too nonchalant. He was like, okay, well, are you, are you coming over? First of all, it was hard for me to get his time to schedule this appointment. 
he didn't really seem to care about selling this car. And then um, at the last minute, it was I remember it was pouring rain the day that I had scheduled to go look at it. And it, that happened out of nowhere on the afternoon of the day. So I was like, I kind of didn't feel like going out in the rain. And I kind of called over. I talked to myself. I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to come. He's like, okay, click. And a little bit later, his supervisor called. And he was like, no, you know what? We would like you to come and look at it. It was in April. And he was like, because it's, you know, summer's coming up. He's like, this car won't be here in two months. You know what I mean? Like, it's priced to, to sell. And so he was like, we would like you to just at least come take a look at it. You know, don't know no pressure, but just come look, you know? And I was like, all right, I gotta go get this car. It, the color, I'm serious. People, you know, you, you know that I'm telling you the truth. If the car would have been perfect in every way but that color, I wasn't that thirsty for it. I was willing to go any place in this country. It, I, okay, so I was, I need to go take a look at that color because that's gonna decide it for me got into the place anyway it was this luxury dealership too it was like top of the line dealership and that's fine you know i i had every right to be up in there but i wasn't looking at like most of the other type of cars that they were selling in this thing this old so the dude tells me it was an old dude he said he was tired of rolling out of his car because it was so low and so he had brought it in traded it in because he got something more practical or whatever hold on I've got my heater and I'm just turning that off and so the, it, this place though was like stories different floors and shit and so I met the brother you know he was coming down some stairs and we met on the stairs and then he was like oh I got it I got the car it's upstairs and I was like oh, I didn't understand how the car was upstairs but that's exactly we went up another flight and walked through this building and then that took us out to um, a parking garage and so then we were out in a parking and the car we came to the door entry of the parking garage and the car was over there and from as soon as I saw it oh my god because it was in purple oh my god it was like that racer cherry red with a little bit of the glitter and sparkle in it oh I just couldn't, um, you know. <laughs> I'll have what she's having <laughs> from Mary Met Sally. Um, I had to keep it real cool. So I got in. Brother and I were getting in to just take a little test drive. Oh my God, I got to get in. I'm touching the steering wheel. It was perfect. I don't know how to drive a stick. Okay. My dad tried to show me how to drive a stick. So I probably, like, in an emergency could but I'm not good at it, and so I was never gonna get, and I know, like, that right there could be sacrilege. Any of you Mustang aficionados now, you're like, mom, mom, because mine wasn't automatic, but I needed it to be so I could drive it, you know what I mean? I didn't want to fuck it up. If you don't know how to drive a stick, that's not the time to learn how to do one, you know what I mean? So I wasn't gonna get a manual, though I know that's the best experience with Mustangs. Um, so trust me. The automatic was not second best, okay? So, oh my God, I was driving this thing. Oh my God, okay, so anyway, we were almost back to the dealership and I just couldn't keep it cool anymore. And I didn't like, you know, I didn't lose my cool, but I was driving and I said to them, I'm gonna get it. <laughs> he was like, oh, really? Cause like, I was not giving him any indi indication and yeah, I bought it and I had it for several years. I had it for probably, four years I think it must have been 2017 yeah I don't think I was I wasn't 40 yet um, so but you know it like I said it wasn't a midlife crisis it was a lifelong goal every single time I turned it on oh my gosh just that rumble people do the specs on this bitch the baddest bitch Mustang I have ever seen if I ever get to a place where like I just have to have it again. I would seriously look up the VIN number from my baby to go get her back. That old dude that had bought it put 5,000 miles on it. I bought it with 5,000 miles on it. I probably only put about 5,000 on it. So I kept it in pristine condition. He kept it in pristine condition. He got this type of coating on it, like up to the middle part of the hood to like protect it from chips and shit. That, like that was just a big part of it. There wasn't a 
speck in the paint job top was pristine and perfect those tire everything and then just these extra things I like I told you I wanted a 2013 14 it was a 2014 it had one of those little backup rear view mirror cameras in it that they didn't have those on that year yet I don't know why this car had all the features it did have the seat warmers the coolest thing my stepmom I took her and my dad for drives a couple of times and we were getting out I was trying to explain to her this feature she just couldn't visualize what I was telling her I was like fine you'll see it in a minute when we when we're done when we're getting out we got out whenever you would close the doors white Mustang horses mirrored onto the ground the baddest bitch my papa curated that car for me okay because it had features I couldn't even fathom to think to ask. And then, like I've told, I know we're doing a little bit longer of an intro here, but people live life, get a GT, whatever. But do a Mustang. Like, I wouldn't drive the Charger. You know, it's got to be cute, okay? The Mustang is sexy. The Charger is muscle. Um, as far as that is concerned they were saying the specs on the charger in this thing was just a little bit more souped up um couple bits more horsepower a little bit bigger of an engine and that in these chase scenes the driver literally is having to let up a little bit off of the accelerator because like the mustang wouldn't have been able to keep up with it and that's fine um the mustang is beautiful though that's what i just as I was getting the gifts for the intro of this thing, when he's flying down the hills in San Francisco, and they said they needed it to be that Mustang to be able to handle, you know, just flipping up in the air like that. Look at the grill of that bitch. Oh my gosh. It's just the look of a Mustang. They fuck up the look of their cars year to year as they keep revamping the body style sometimes. That's why I'm telling you, I was very honed in 2013-14 perfection. As far as every angle, the look of that bitch, it, oh. <laughs> Taking the top down on it, it's too easy to get it over 100. They were saying the director wanted to keep the scenes capped at 75, 80. It's too easy to be over 100. They were like, most of the time they were doing 110. It, you don't mean to. You're just going that fast. It's a Mustang. It wants to run. So, oh my gosh, people, live life have those experiences take the top down get it over a hundred and just live like and anybody that's gonna be the little it, it it that's fine they don't need to be riding in your mustang next to you but that's fine you, you can't handle this okay so what we do on this channel is we watch movies together from start to finish. I find the movies and then you have the ability because I can find them, you can find them. I share the information of where that is over on my sister Pinterest page. There's always a link in the description. It'll take you to the board that I make for each movie filled with pictures just from that film. The first or second picture that you're gonna see within the board is giving you all of the information that you need to be able to push play on the movie with me in a few minutes here when I say playing in three, two, one. We will be pushing play on the exact same runtime version of the movie and watch the movie with me. Do everything on one screen if you can. If you can't, you make it work by pushing play on the movie on your phone. Say this was my phone, you can push play on the movie and watch the movie on your phone if you're just making it work. If you have access to combining this video of me and the movie on one screen, you can also make that work. Setting everything up on your laptop, me in one tap, the movie in another. Pull the movie to take up more of the screen. Then take an HDMI cable from your computer and plug it into your TV. Now that one screen on your biggest TV, um, screen. If you can do things electronic wirelessly, it's called casting. People, I don't have to cast. I don't know. Let me give you an option that's working for me. As long as I have my freaking TV turned on, I'm sitting in my office over here. And as long as the TV is turned on, the play on TV button is available on the video of me and YouTube. I push that and then I just have the movie 
in another tab that goes full screen and I watch myself on top of the movie. It doesn't have to involve casting. So, you know, there's the animation for doing it like that. You launch the movie full screen, do play on TV, picture in picture on this video of me. It shrinks me, floats me, puts me in a corner of the movie. And that is always the intended way that I would say to you to watch these films is film full screen because part of whatever screen you're making use of and me just off in the corner there's a runtime timer minute hour minute and second tells you exactly where the playback of the movie needs to be so that i'm in perfect sync with what you're looking at what i'm saying matches exactly the playback of the movie but that's what we do i had to tell you in depth about my mustang people because you know there's no shame in i made money to uh, part ways with it it just was the time in life that it was but um, that's it that's why I was so thankful to always be so present every single time I turned that bitch on that noise of that V8 was just I was like oh my god every time I didn't drive it enough just to be honest too I didn't drive it enough it was my second car you know like I needed to drive my SUV back and forth to work all the time. That's the reason why I made money on selling it, people. It was in such pristine condition. It had 10,000 miles on it. It was a 2014, I sold it in 2021. And yeah, I mean, every single moment inside of that thing, I was so present. The times that I would have the top down and just be, oh my God, live life people okay and if there's just phases in time that you're living like your absolutely best life be totally fully present in every minute of those moments making the memories you know it's plenty enough to last you a lifetime let me get the movie queued up and let's watch the legendary chase scene takes about 10 minutes of runtime it says i don't feel like it actually lasts that long but let's kind of time it it says an hour and five minutes is when we hit it let me get it queued up i'll be right back with you okay i um push play and the the sound was coming through my tv instead of my headphones so this is a redo <laughs> hour 53 45 ish runtime you've seen that on the screen i didn't think that the movie was this long again there is also like a legendary scene going on at the airport i feel like that's more towards the end something about if that either really is or isn't McQueen or whoever the stunt double is that does it, it just had to be like perfectly timed. And um, this uh, wins the Oscar for best editing and they say that is a key detail in what makes the car chase scene so uh, pristine, right? Here we go, playing in the three, two, one, click. Uh, I mean, and then there's just also the story, right? Supposedly, I don't know what this little detail is, but I guess, I don't know, maybe to like get in character for the role. Warner Brothers Seven Arts, it's also produced, if we missed that already, by McQueen's production company. I feel like this is one of his first movies in his new production company. With his new production company. They say the music is really chill, very jazzy. Solar, that's his company. Oh yeah, it is jazzy. The guitar, is that my dad playing? <laughs> um, what? Yeah, I, oh, okay, so McQueen is like hanging out with the San Francisco cop who kind of becomes legendary because I guess like the year that this movie comes out or the next year, there's some like heinous crimes that go on that this cop that McQueen was kind of shadowing around um, was a detective solving uh, gory stuff that happened in San Francisco. Yeah, this is good music. And it's basically like based on Shadowing the cop will see McQueen has a shoulder holster for his gun. 
this is really nice music compared to what we are struggling through at the beginning of the Thomas Crown Affair. When did that movie come out? Is it before or after this? Oh, did this will just um, undo a grenade? Oh no, smoke, I guess. Okay, why is there shooting? This is a robbery? It's gonna be equivalent to a first time watch of. I didn't really pay much costumer. Alan Levine, we see him a lot huh, when it's just gonna be mostly men stuff. I feel like in this era, did he also do um, In the Heat of the Night? We've seen Alan Levine. Okay, like again, I'm kind of, what in the world? shooting it kind of seemed like all of these people were this little crew trying to do whatever they were doing like that there the man by himself was on the inside and he undid a smoke bomb and then his crew busted in the windows and came in and then there was shooting they seemed like the criminal We lost him. Did they try and do a heist with this fool and then he just took all of the money? It, the, the criminals were shooting at each other, right? Like, there were not police involved in that. So is that what happened? Like, they pulled off a heist, but then one of them got away with all of the money? That's how we lost him, because he took all of the goods? This is all filmed on location in San Francisco. And it's the um, director's first American movie. Supposedly he had just done a movie, I think that was in England, and it had a car chase scene in it. That's what got him hired to be the director for this. I mean, so there's a lot of other stuff that goes on in this movie, obviously for an hour and 53, and if the car chase scene is only, let's time it if it's 10. I don't have my phone, as I say, to do that. We'll keep track of it. I'm not a guest. Well, well, why would you have a message at the hotel then? Wait, this is the dude that pulled the pin. Why would they leave, why would anybody leave a message for you at a hotel that you're not a guest there? That was fake, huh? He didn't think that they had a message for whoever they are. It's weird, right? But that's the dude. He's the one that got away. People, I promise you, it's going to be 99.9% .9 the first time. So that was just a cab. It looked like it was his own personal car. San Francisco pickup message, Mark Hopkins Hotel. Well, that was a bust. And it's got a phone. Chalmers. It sounded like he said Kevin, but he said Cabby, didn't he? He said Cabby. The um, picture, I like it. It's not feeling, that's Robert Duvall. It's not feeling 1968 to me. I don't know. I'm, you know that this is not my sweet spot in film. It's not bothering me. The 
way that it looks. I think because their clothes don't look all hardcore 1968. <laughs> like, have you guys, I haven't gotten this overwhelming fashion feel. Is this McQueen? You gotta come in. Isn't his lady in that bed? I feel like the, I do feel like I remember that will be something we will see. Okay, so let him in. This is his partner. Probably like five minutes ago. Oh, well, maybe she's not. I remember seeing her like with nothing on, and he wouldn't let this fool come into his room if she was in there like that. What the f is that? Some little nasty instant coffee. What is he sitting there for? Yeah, and he was like. Frank, what do you need in order to keep it moving all the way out of the bed? Like, what was he just sitting on the edge of the bed like that for? All shivering. I wouldn't do that. Shit, if I felt all cold like that, I'd just get back under the blankets. But I guess that's how he has to wake up. Huh? <laughs> he makes himself sit there cold instead of getting back under the blankets. Okay, so he's dressed now. We don't know what Del Getty came over there for. And here he is. It is kind of feeling a little bit like Thomas Crowna, except he's a cop right now. Oh, you know what? It got a nomination for best sound. The sound is good. Right away, they know he's a cop. He has such blue eyes. Did I say that in the Thomas Crown Affair? I feel like I was tripping on his blue eyes in that movie, but they really are. They're like dark blue. He's a lieutenant, isn't that what he just called him? organization.
He scraped out on So, the organization, that's what Sidney Poitier's movie is about in just a couple of years. Doesn't that come out in 71? So, the organization is who, is his name Johnny Russ? State's evidence witness. Okay, so that dude, ooh, he did a heist with those fools for the organization. Then he dipped out. They were trying to shoot at him. They lost him, and now he's turned state's witness. As I recall, this is a hotel, motel, holiday inn. I mean, he is staying. Um, it can be grosser. and his captain I don't know if it was his captain but a captain recommended him. check the roof and the acid uh, okay well this is dude he's just there by himself who's Chalmers, the captain. Look at this nasty ass. Ew. They just did a heist with them. Who is Chalmers? Dude, or this is Chalmers. Do we pay it? Do we follow along? Did he detective? Because he's so hot. Okay, we still don't know Chalmers is the fool who ever he needs to. Is Chalmers? Oh. Oh, so they're just going one at a time. Who the F is Chalmers? Is it that creepy dude that's having the Senate committee meeting at his house or whatever? Or Chalmers is the captain? Oh, this dude's just about work-life balance, you know what I mean? If I give you some of my weekend time, I still get my two days off. I'll take it during the middle of the week. So they said that chick from um, Butch Cassidy, they offered her this role. She would take it. To have a soul. Is she an engineer?
<laughs> what the heck is she doing? <laughs> Ew, why? Why is she doing this? It looks like a little fashion factory. Yeah. Nobody trying to do all of that shit. If you are not zoned out to do, ew. Because I worked at an engineering firm for a really long time. I'm not an engineer, but ew. He's got the shift later on. Okay. They said this band playing is a real local band. This scene is pretty cool. Because I feel like we don't have any talking. We just, it's just we're observing. This is cool. It's kind of weird, like, we're definitely just getting the scoop on him and this chick, but, like, he just hangs out with her crowd, right? Like, he doesn't even need to sit right next to her at the table, right? Is it he? Is he even, like, across from her? It's almost like as if they're entertaining, right? Like they're just entertaining their friends at this little cafe. Oh. Okay. Okay, so obviously that scene in the beginning, she was not next to him. But I did, we see that. She's his woman, that's fine, right? But he's got a shift, right? What is he doing? Oh, okay, so, no, that dude was doing the first shift, so he's just switching up with this. What? Okay, so the other dude is going to go until the morning, and then he'll be there in the morning. For the morning shift. He was married to, um, what was her name? Ali McGraw. He was married to another really beautiful, um, lady for a long time before he kind of made it. And then, I mean, I feel like they were married more than 10 years and they had kids and stuff she was a little uh, she was an actress I feel like more on Broadway she did theater and for a while she was bigger than him because you know he hadn't made it yet here in Hollywood okay okay so it's not the police are not gonna fall for that right 
Okay, so don't let those fools up, and he's calling somebody else. Is this fool setting something up? Or he just knows he's about to get it. Yeah. A friend. Who the F is Charlie's? Is he all out of breath? Yeah, fool. I mean, he's not smart enough to know that. I just said, does he, is he setting something up or does he know he's not about to make it? He set something up. <gasps> Why did he do that? Unlock that door. Ew. Oh my gosh. Well, that was a sawed off shotgun at that point blank range. Oh my gosh. There couldn't have been a survivor, right? But they rushed him to the hospital, anyway? Or this isn't the hospital. Or it is. He unlocked that door. And he got it anyway. Who is Chalmers? Well, did I? People, you know who that is. I missed it. I was talking over it. It's the captain that recommended McQueen. <gasps> There's a scar. <laughs> oh, so he just drives the Mustang just because he's a bad mother like that. Yeah, shotgun. They were saying like they're trying to make this all realistic. So I guess like the crime scenes, you know, the CSI stuff, they're trying to make it look legit. Oh, and that like at the hospital, it's real doctors and nurses too, because it's a real hospital in San Francisco. Like everything is on location in San Francisco. Okay, well, who the F is this? The cops or the killers? What is going on? I'm. Are we, am I going to be able to keep up with what is going on in this movie, or no? Oh, that's his partner. Okay, one of his partners. It looked like they got him higher than in his leg, but thank goodness they only did. Did he tell him to go home to his wife? Uh, The color is really good. Did we see who did the color? Is it Technicolor or not? Was it Deluxe? I'm like, okay, well, well, if the door is not open, then just open it. But he's got this dude in his hands. He couldn't open the door. They came in. Yeah, cause he did. Chalmers. Mm-hmm. He let those fools in.
Ross was from Chicago. He ran the numbers for the organization for his brother. He was doing a heist. He pulled a pin, let the smoke out. Those fools busted in the window, came in, started shooting. I was like, what the F is the shooting for? They pulled off the heist. Then they were shooting at him because he was running away. He called Chalmers, got set up in the Hotel Motel Holiday Inn. Had the cops have to come. Specifically, McQueen was assigned to do it. After he has to go talk to this politician who is corrupt as F. And what else? Okay, then, dude... It's just been stupid. Yeah, he wasn't taking it serious, huh? Because he's playing his radio all loud. Chalmers and a friend wants to come up, and so he goes and stands by the door. That's what I'm saying. Is he setting something up, or does he know that he's about to get it? He undid the chain. And they still did him anyway. He doesn't like this. Oh, he's gone. He's gone, right? There's a chance he's not. How come they don't know? Oh, they're operating on him? It was a shotgun. At point blank range. He's not going to make it. These are real doctors and nurses. Oh, and if he doesn't make it, that fool was like, all of this stuff is, you're sexy for the front page. It'll make or break your career. Keep him alive until Monday. And now look, it was that serious that something was going to happen to him before Monday, but he was in on it. He just expected that they were going to kill the cops or the cop. They thought it was only going to be Steve McQueen there in that room. Oh, that's a brother. Oh, no, that's right. This is an actor. That wasn't his uh, partner. That was... That's this dude's wife, okay. Oh, well, he's gonna make it, huh? This is Russ. His face was all jacked up. Okay. Oh, and he's he's all effed because this happened. This isn't Chalmers. I'm, okay. Because mm -hmm. it was some type of a setup.
And they thought he was going to be there. Or cops. And they weren't supposed to be coming to get in. He didn't play it by the book. D he didn't run it by the book? Were there supposed to be two of them in the room? How did he not play it by the book? He didn't choose that location. Um, Chalmers did? Chalmers is this captain. Sweet. She was sweet, her little sweet little angel voice. A little glass of milk for him. Alright, so this is not Chalmers, right? Or is it? A little clicky shoes. straight to Ross? This was where he just walked away from Ross. And there's the brother surgeon. And the queen saw him, right? Of what? Oh, you did, fool. And it should have been him. Oh, who are your people? Are they the law? Oh, well, he wanted to see a supervisor of the doctor, though, right? Get the supervisor. Oh, well, it's not going to happen. 
Oh, well, yeah, this full. Okay, because you know why? Because another attempt is going to happen here at the hospital. Who knew where he was full? Like, who found this room to stay away from all of the windows in it to put him into that then Chalmers and a friend? Oh, it's happening like that. This is right here. A full, that's a um, assassin. <laughs> wow. There is going to be another attempt on his life, McQueen, so don't walk away, right? Because now you've walked away from being able to see through that little window. I'm going to see behind you already. McQueen, you're right next to him, right? On the second floor. Oh, and, and the brother. Not Chalmers' doctor. Okay, there are two assassins, and one of them is going to be the driver in the scene. I don't think it's this dude, huh? That's not who's driving the car later. Oh, hang on, use an ice pick? Because oh, he's coming for close contact. Why did she scream? What was so terrifying about that? that she screamed and dropped her train? Why does um, McQueen look like a soccer dad right now? He, this cardigan that he's wearing is horrible. It is aging him to look like he is a grandpa. I mean, he looks amazing anyway, but this is horrific on him. <laughs> this is not the look. I mean, it, is it cold? Do you know what I mean? It just looks like... <laughs> he should be in a cabin in the mountains getting ready to read a book. Except for that he's Steve McQueen, too. That's the only reason why he can wear the sweater. Is it a sweater or is it corduroy? Like, let me be able to see it better, but it looks like a um, <laughs> knitted sweater. <laughs> like somebody that's taking knitting. I took knitting lessons one time. Just thought it would be therapeutic. It hurt my hands. Um... Do either one of you are not seeing each other? Why was this fool looking not behind himself? McQueen, you noticed that he's behind you, right? Um, what is this angle? That's pretty cool. Who else is 
helping McQueen with this chase right now. And he has a gun, right? Like, he has some type of a weapon, right? My grandma worked at a hospital for forever. It's a sweater. It's horrible. It's an old man color sweater too. People don't make me go get my sweater that I have still to this day of my grandpa's. <laughs> it just doesn't have the like the leather on the front. Uh, Arthur wears it in the uh, King of Queens. Oh, it's uh, Russ. Because his doctor is right there with him. And that's a good cop. All the cops are okay. Right? Because I was thinking that Chalmers was supposedly this police captain that recommended McQueen. But Chalmers is the politician. Okay, so the dude got away. Oh, well, there's not even any type of noise. I thought we were hearing the little beep earlier. Oh. I thought it was going beep, beep, beep. Time of death. That fool said he was coming back with his people, huh? So, oh, they're just not going to know what room he's in. He's just going to have to be sent on a wild goose chase throughout the different floors. So, seriously, did, um... McQueen not take the assignment serious enough that um, he had the three cops of them taken one on one shifts with dude. That wasn't very safe. I mean, any of them needed backup. But it's as if that Chalmers dude is actually like the maddest about the whole thing that he was standing there talking to McQueen because you, you know Chalmers sent because they were supposed to be getting him McQueen because he was supposed to have been there in that little teeny tiny tight ass room at an angle <laughs> with these funky windows that are just like yeah I mean Oh, 
they're taking, they're not letting their eyes off of the body. There it is. Maybe not. Or it is, or it isn't. Yeah, it is. It is. They have that, my aunt and dad, that fast back. Which is not pretty. I mean, I wouldn't want a fast back. The thing that I really loved about the body of mine was the back of it. I feel like that's what they kind of mess with a lot. Um, and it looks different to many. They put different curves in it. And sometimes I just don't like the way it looks. Um, but that grill. Ooh. <laughs> They change that up in the front sometimes too, though. I mean, it's like Mustang gets it perfection, and then they just make it look hideous at times too. Like I said, those '80s ones are no thank you. Just in my very bougie. <laughs> I am not a materialistic person. People, I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, yeah, I am. If you're more on the spiritual path, you are knowing that this world is not where to be stockpiling up, you know. Denzel Washington says it best. There's never going to be a U-Haul behind a hearse, right? It does, you are not taking a thing that you acquire here with you. If you acquire enough, hopefully you're leaving it behind to help some, you know, passing it along. But that's not what it's about. Um, but I indulged with that Mustang. I, like I said, I wasn't thirsty. If that, my perfect baby would have been kind of purplish, I wouldn't have got it. Oh, here comes this fool. With his clicky shoes. And he got his crew with him now. He's coming back to the same room, huh? It's empty. Oh, but dude ain't supposed to be passed away. Oh, well, well, I thought you said Dr. Willard couldn't be around him or anything. I want Dr. Willard to play real dumb. <laughs> Who's Joe? His doctor. This one is not in the super high Oh, so his name matters. People need to give an F. Oh, she knows what she's doing. She's, is the supervisor really out on her little coffee break or something? Who is this dude with this pipe? This is the supervisor. because you're the police you need to have the paper trail with the official signatures legally being the reason why somebody's medical records need to be released this is my HR background for people mm -mm. I over talked he was talking some type of shit was this full from the paper? Because he has a photographer with him.
is that McQueen? Is he Bullard? He's oh, Bullet. His name is Bullet. <laughs> Oh, because Captain Baker is his little bitch. Oh, I love it. Why is he um wet wearing clothes? Oh, he has a robot. Okay. Oh, he hung up on the captain. Is he going rogue? Is he fired? He was supposed. He needs to get written up. I was thinking about that too. It's like in these corporate situations, people there. Like this is what supposedly the real cop did. He wears a sh shoulder host holster. Um, people, when you think about it, corrective action. For adults, I mean, frosted mini weights. Yum. I have some of those with no milk right now. Oh, this is the scene of the crime? He still has access? What's he looking at? Is there all kinds of blood or something? Why is he just stopped in his tracks right there? This room is so little, huh? Like, it was purposely chosen by Chalmers. Ew. I mean, that's, like, he was going to make it from that anyway. This is a good movie, aside from the chase. Um, Cause again, an hour and five. I don't want to like look at the timer to see when it happens, but I do remember. He's just gonna kind of be driving around, and he's gonna get a sense that like. Yes, he does. Yeah. Start remembering. Oh, God. Yeah, he's playing games. Oh, they're doing good cop, bad cop. All right. I've got to take you downtown. square things? Okay. I don't know. I'm not good at, like, telling face shapes and shit. When they try it, like, for women, they're like, well, if you have this shape face, this hairstyle would work for you. I can never tell what my shape face is. Um, Ross? Oh, 
he is really remembering all of a sudden. Why is he all of a sudden able to recall all of these details? It's a GT. Of course, it's a GT. It's, there's, you don't, don't do anything less, people. It's not worth your time. <laughs> okay, that dog was in the back of the, but it was just a taxi that Ross was in. I feel like it's right here. I remember this. And then I feel like he gets a sense, like somebody's been following him. I feel like it's getting ready to start, people. Oh, wait, there was Robert Duvall. Okay. Never mind. Maybe he'll be back at that spot. Yeah, he's going to go back there because he left his Mustang, huh? He'll be back at that spot. Tom. That's Tom from The Godfather. Oh yeah, then he went to a payphone. Because he tried to go get a message at the hotel. A proper hotel, right? And then he came in, he called Chalmers. Mm -hmm. Somebody's following him. So he uses somebody outside of the police department when he needs to just really quit effing around and get some information. Because why does a cop need to go meet somebody? He called Chicago. He called the organization. Oh yeah, he's aware of his whereabouts. Didn't McQueen notice that? Oh, okay, that's his direct boss. Oh, and Chalmers. Oh, Chalmers came to church. What's about a captain? A captain is a great position. Chalmers. He's a lawyer. Wow. Um, okay. Is that what is happening to him right now? That was an intense word. Um, who is he applying that to? Like, he's not going to let that happen to himself, or he wants that to happen to Bullet. 
Okay, a bully made a phone call said he needed some information and he's meeting at somebody at Rico's. It wasn't it Rico? In Rico's? In Rico's. <laughs> gonna get a bean burrito? What is going on? Why in the world is he needing to um, get some real information from an informant? He's now driving his Mustang. Are these fools in the Charger in the neighborhood? Who's, who is this right now observing the scene? Oh, okay. Well, Frank needs to get his information from time to time, huh? Okay, look, is he, is he getting dropped back off toward his Mustang now? And these fools in the Charger are somewhere around, right? It must be about time. The first time that I saw this movie from start to finish, like I said, I had never seen the chase scene. I had only caught, look, I had only caught the part at the airport at the, and that's like the last five minutes of it, I feel. Yeah, 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 that's right, McQueen, you noticed that, the, the, oh, God. Yes, that noise, <laughs> that sound. Oh, is he coming right up next to them? Are they? Okay, I felt like he was, they were sitting there. I thought like he was just going to pull up next to them. Oh, they're just going to really um, obviously continue to um, follow him because he looked right at them. Oh, this dude's in the car? I thought there was just one of them. <laughs> this dude um, is really a stunt driver. He's going to be doing the driving, I feel like. The... Look, it'll be every shot where we see them in the car. All right, we should, you know, let me see. I can see what time. Oh, he got these gloves on. I never had driving gloves on. sexy <laughs> oh it begins 
Are they stopping? When do they get stupid? It's gonna get stupid real quick and... No more stop signs will be adhered to. So, the um, pursuer is being pursued now. It'll stay that way, huh? Oh, what's he doing? Oh, he's strapping up! Because <laughs> it's getting stupid now. Oh, he will be able. Um, it's a K pop fool. Get the F out of the way. This is what I had the gift of. Yes! Ah! Okay, you just saw a dent in the car. They said that actually with the editing and how they're doing these scenes all over the place and the things that will happen, we just saw that dent in the car that shouldn't happen yet. Burning rubber. That's what this scene is. Because that Mustang is rear wheel. <laughs> ah! That's the manual aspect of it, I know. If there is a car to learn to drive the stick with, it's, it would definitely be for this. They said that for this charger, Ford had lent, for the movie, two other type of Ford cars, and they were like, no, we don't want a Ford on Ford scene, chase scene. They said they're giving us this perspective inside of the car, like, we're driving. <laughs> McQueen is everything, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, supposedly this green beetle, do we see it more than once or something? Look at the grill of this Mustang, people. There it is again, yeah. Yes. Okay, see, mine, I could get it going so fast like that. Of course, I'm sure it handled really well too but i never was like let me just turn going 80 miles an hour turn the 90 degree corner of it i, I know it could do it right <laughs> okay yeah because they go on to like the highway and shut them See, that's McQueen. They're like, anytime we see him in the car, he's driving. And they said that the rear view mirror adjusts when it's higher up, it's him. When it's lower, it's the stunt driver. I guess McQueen had like a regular stunt driver. There's, I've never seen The Great Escape, but whatever about that, um, his stunt driver from that movie. <laughs> That charger is bad too, but it's ugly as hell. I want the Mustang. Oh my gosh, look how fast they're going. This fool doesn't have a seatbelt, does he? We didn't see him click it in. Click it or ticket. Oh yeah, Sam. This thing has more horsepower, but this Mustang is keeping up. I, I, I... Okay, okay. You didn't lose him though, full. Don't. Oh, look at him smirking. He's gonna be back on the road.
<laughs> yes. So McQueen was just driving this Mustang because that's the type of man he is. That's his right of choice. That would be my man of choice. <laughs> oh! Oh, so don't go too fast, dude. He's got range with this, though, anyway. I, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, 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 damn. I mean, yeah, why are you? trying to get around them now McQueen what are you trying to do control where they're going oh you're trying to yes force them off the road damn I mean he's trying to um There is not, like, a material thing <laughs> that I want more. <laughs> oh, he did get him. Oh, that's the um, explosion. They said there was some explosion that actually happened a second too soon, but the editor was able to save that. It was about 10 minutes, 9 minutes and 45 seconds, I think is what they said, or 54. It's probably 45. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> A man's man. Um, Is he here with his write-up? Oh, he told him. Oh, uh, about the organization. Oh, well, yeah, because the captain's on Chalmers' payroll. 
So he's got to try and foil. Oh, he's got to go let Chalmers know, like, he's up. Oh, because that fool said so. Or he took the last one. He literally took the last car. Because he's got to go tell Chalmers everything. Well, you still have your Mustang, right? Did he total his Mustang? It kind of went into a ditch, right? Okay. Oh, look at people. Perfect timing. Mother's Day brunch. I was feeling like this isn't a Mother's Day movie, but perfect. <laughs> oh, she's just his little girlfriend. I, his little chauffeur now. I thought he said that um, she couldn't know about his work. This is feeling like um, Kiss Me Deadly when dude is coming back into his apartment from the hospital. That looks an awful lot like dude. Didn't that look an awful lot like Ross? Um, the lady was no longer with us inside of her room. Why is this girl running up to it? This is exactly the type of stuff that he told her is not for her. It's not him. Mm. She didn't hear um, anything go off. She ran in there and thought that was him. Um, I think I didn't understand that before the first time I saw this. they been together? He told her it's not for her. And just don't come in next time. 
Of course it's dangerous what he does. wondering what she was going to say to him. Is, is he giving that to her? He gives her callousness. Well, girl, if you're not down to ride, then... Okay. Yeah, it's what's going to happen right now. How are you dealing with this right now? Simmons, this girl, this lady, yes, she has fabulous pink leather luggage. Can they get into it anywhere? Didn't the dude that was walking out right before everybody ran in look exactly like Ross? But it couldn't have been, because they got him. So that was his brother. Is his brother going to be him? Are, are they identical twins? Did... Do they have gloves on? No. taken out. It's his brother, huh? Travelers checks. Another one. Oh, this is the...
processing scene that they were saying they're trying to do. Legit. leaving the um, country. He's getting a fingerprint on Ross to see Webb. Well, do you need to get a fingerprint of each one of your fingers? They're all different, I'm sure, but isn't it always just this? this is how they read things back in this day. Why is this fool able... What is he? He's a politician. What is his fingerprint going to reveal they didn't they were able to preserve any fingerprints on all of that stuff that they were going through oh can he make him do that There's this captain. Yeah, fool, because I'm trying to understand who you are. You know what I'm saying? First of all, like, man to man to Steve McQueen is not the move. And it's just like, who are you standing up here demanding shit? I'm going to get your ass kicked. Like, he's going to keep trying too many times, and he's going to get his ass kicked. Does that happen in this movie? <laughs> These old school. Is this an old school fax machine or something? The F is that thing. <laughs> something is printing on it. Huh? <laughs> on this triplicate carbon copy with the phone attached to it. It's a fax machine in 1968. <laughs> Y'all, my audience, you guys are from this era. They had this already back in the day. Oh, these are pictures, right? That's what it's a telecopier. He's the telecopier operator. You know everybody in this room don't know how to run that thing. It is a fax machine. <laughs> That's Ross. Your Senate summoned the wrong man. That was Ross coming out of um, her hotel room. He looked real similar to Rennick, huh? That's also how he was able to pull it off. Here's the airport. 
Are we almost over? All the way back before like um, security and everything, huh? Let's, I remember like praying times, right? Just being able to like go up to somebody's gate with them throughout the whole entire airport. He was polite, and I gave him a little smile. Yeah, anybody can just go up to the gate. Why do they have to check the passports? They know it's the real Ross, right? Did he see dude at the hotel? Okay, because he had just done that lady. I got info about the plane stunt that's going to happen, TCM, one time. And in the stuff I was looking up right now, they didn't mention it at all. That's him? I guess he doesn't look exactly... Like, dude, was that him? What are they looking for? They think they're going to be able to recognize this dude? Well, he got on the plane then, huh? London was already taking off. It looked like it was taking off later than the Rome flight. I saw 9.55. on this flight to London instead of going to Rome. <laughs> okay. That wasn't the there yeah. That's who we saw in the beginning. Pulling the pin out. That's not the dude that was in the um, hotel room. People, that's Ross, right? Who was really Renick or Rebic or whatever in this story. That's the same fool. Just in real life, the same person. I don't 
like to be mind effed like that. Is that the same man? <laughs> Oh, that's Chalmers. I he gonna try it one time too many. <laughs> How come he found out already? The captain. Oh no. No. I would say it's probably Well you were already talking that shit in the beginning, right? <laughs> Because I would do it though too. You're a little too close, a fool. <laughs> Is he really walking away? Or he thinks he's gonna snatch this fool? There's something so completely corrupt about Chalmers, right? Because he um sent the killers uh, to get Ross, and it just happened to not be Ross. <laughs> Wow. And then he came trying to talk. So he said, I'll be delighted to let you have it tomorrow. Okay, so they feel like they just made this flight come back to the gate. Dude's gonna, everybody's getting off of the plane, right? And they're just once again gonna stand there thinking that they can um, recognize him. Oh, they got that picture of him on the fax. That's why they came out and told McQueen, excuse me, Lieutenant, your pictures are coming through on the fax machine <laughs> in 1968. Oh, this has been good. This is a great Steve McQueen entry. Um, it's as much because of that, about that car scene, as just all of the rest of the minutes of this movie, though. Like, it's not a dud before or after it. These people have to wait for 45 minutes, sorry. <laughs> Well, he didn't just get off of the plane, right? Because it looks like these are the last passengers. Oh, he's in the bathroom. <laughs> Sorry, people. It's Friday night after a insane 40 hour week um, I was very much looking forward to just watching this movie with you guys same dude it is the same human being as from the beginning of the movie right i mean people i again i don't like to be mind effed like that that um somehow i'm not looking at the same person <laughs> as who was in the beginning of this movie it's the same man but not supposed to be right um, I was wondering how he got out.
somehow that like the FAA didn't approve this scene or whatever, right? Like they weren't gonna allow this to really um, happen like on their watch, but then I feel like that just somehow they did it anyway or whatever. <laughs> Is there another airplane that he um, has to run around, or that was it? Okay, I mean, this plane coming through right here, they're off of the runway. This is feeling, um, Heat, isn't that that movie with De Niro and Pacino? Don't they do something at the airport? Uh, oh, hey, hey, hey! Be real careful, McQueen! another thing with another airplane oh this fool's just gonna try and get on this airplane right here scene with an airplane. <laughs> what the whole entire ass? Get this! I um, was making the sound of that pretty muted by pushing my butts in like that, but that was loud. Um, oh my god. Are we like completely in love? Like I, um, wow. <laughs> He's got the shoulder <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Excuse me if you heard that. I feel the need to excuse it because it's like if you did hear it and I didn't say excuse me, that's completely disgusting. <laughs> that looked like Beaver from Leave It to Beaver. Oh. 
Oh, damn. You know what I mean? Like, he's totally prepared that at any given moment, he's going to need to open fire in this airport right now. This dude is not standing right here against this wall, right? Oh, there he is. Well, seriously, you're not, once again, you're not looking more around your surroundings to see McQueen. security back in the day. I mean, they both have their weapons out. Right? This fool is... Does he still have his hand on his weapon? Yes. They do something through the glass. This is a good effing movie, people. Damn. Oh, everybody's looking for Duke. Well, you are way too sweaty, okay? Like, you are so suspect. Yeah. Oh, no. Through the glass. away you know what I mean like um <laughs> Chalmers is gonna get knocked out I mean if he's coming up um to him one more time yeah like I yeah let's see him drive away <clears throat> so is his career did it make or break his career oh my god I'm just whew is he coming straight to his woman He totaled his Mustang. Oh, this is his own apartment home. I mean, okay, like how does he feel about the fact that she's right there? Did they break up early. I mean, they didn't have, like, the best uh, conversation. She needs to be down to ride. I mean, is he not a cop anymore now?
Five stars. going to be the story of them, huh? Like, we don't need to worry about it. Like, bitch, get your shit together and be there for your man. You know what I'm saying? He had a hard enough day. He ain't gotta be coming home listening to you talking all kinds of shit. You're callous, okay, but is he giving that to you? You know what I'm saying? No. Ooh, I'm about to lay into this. The scene of the two of them in that little restaurant and how I was saying, like, it's, he's totally into her world. It's like they're entertaining her little crew of people at that little cafe. He goes out of his way to be fitting into her little lifestyle. He's all callous. Be like, bitch, he doesn't give it to you. So it said support your local people that are out here working hard. Okay, so like and subscribe. <laughs> oh my, I'm in love. And uh, we will see you next weekend. Okay, let me think now. We've had Hi Sierra, this one. We have one more that I will pick. Vote on the community tab for the viewer pick. It is either Red Dust or Ocean's Eleven. Um, just so you know, Red Dust is really in the lead. I'm very surprised at you guys, um, but I am down. I really want to watch that with you. So, um, just to let you know too, I told you guys at the end of a movie a couple of weeks back, I had chatted with YouTube saying, hey, it, please help me figure out if there's a way to give a link to my polls to my viewers and my videos and they said no and they said it's such a good idea to give that to them as feedback as a suggestion of a feature to add it's available now they've added it so I can give you guys a link directly to the post to the poll to vote for the viewer pick it will be in the description of this video. It's in the description of the videos for this month. You have until May 25th. We're gonna watch it on May 27th. You haven't, it's the last Saturday of this month. Maybe it's May 29th um, is the last Saturday. So just the, vote until the last Thursday of the last week of May. <laughs> We're gonna watch it on Saturday. I'll see you guys then. Love you, talk to you soon, bye. Thank you guys so much for watching this movie with me. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Hey, hit that thumbs up button for me, especially if you're hearing my voice saying this right now. <laughs> you watched to the end. Um, go ahead and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can always be aware of our newest titles to watch together. See you next time.